time. Okay, Ms. Mick, can I just clarify? If it's a private clinic, but the services are covered by the provincial health insurance plan, are the Greens okay with that? No, we need to see full protection of our public health care system. As it erodes, we run the risk, as we prone it out in our document Vision Green, and it's now happening, the risk under Chapter 11 of U.S for-profit medicine coming into this country are simply too great. So would you nationalize all private clinics? We would need to make sure that the Canadian Health Care Act is fully enforced and provinces should do so. But that's not answering my question. Would you nationalize all existing private clinics? We need to ensure the Health Care Act is, is enforced fully. Okay. And that's not a question of nationalizing. That's a question of okay. living up to our legislation. discussion here because it depends. It's on provincial jurisdiction. And it's always the same story in Ottawa. When the federal has money, they are intervening in those uh, jurisdictions. When they want to cut, they're getting their money back, and, but the needs are still there, and the provinces are facing huge challenges, like it happens under the Liberals. And, and, and instead of settling for once the fiscal imbalance, which is not settled, as Mr. Charest, Madame Marois, and Mr. Dumont are saying, we have to go like that instead of intervening when you got money, withdrawing what you don't have, because the needs are there, and they're more and more need with the aging population. There is a way for the federal government to be involved without infringement with provinces, and it's what we will do. Another example is cat catastrophic drugs coverage. More and more in Canada, you will receive your cure outside of the hospitals where the government pays uh, at home, where many times the plan is not covering uh, the drug that you have to pay, and it's maybe very expensive, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. I don't want to be in a country where people have to sell their house to pay for their medication. It's why we will have uh, the federal government partner with the provinces for catastrophic drugs. Mr. Harper, yeah. if I could just be clear on how the Canada Health Act works, uh, any facility that is providing publicly insured services must provide those equally to everybody. And that's a principle that all governments in this country, including the government of Quebec, subscribe to. And that is a core principle uh, that we defend. Now, let me just talk about a couple of things we do above and beyond that. We do have some unique federal responsibilities. We have special roles in research. That's why we created, for instance, the National Cancer Strategy. Uh, it's why we created the Mental Health Commission of Canada, where the, where the federal government can work with professionals and work with others who are involved in the research side of Medicare and often in cooperation with the provinces. And, you know, we heard at the beginning of this about the need for family doctors. And the other need, as Mr. Dion mentioned, is for coverage for medications your doctor says you need. Time and time again, people will tell me they can't afford that, and it breaks their heart. Of course, we heard the same promise from you, Mr. Dion, or your predecessor in 1997, 11 years ago. They said they'd bring in pharmacare. It never happened. We're proposing that, and the way we propose to pay for it is rolling back these huge tax reductions proposed by Mr. Harper, okay. freezing the tax level so we can afford health care. Thank it's you, a Mr. Question of Greetings from the prairies. I'm an artist, I have friends who are artists, and we would like to know what the arts means to each of you and what kind of funding there will be in your budgets. Yes, it means a lot to me. My father was a well-known comedian, I think. My family has a theater in Montreal. Uh, my son and my daughter are working in the movie sector. So uh, I would say that I, I know pretty well the situation there. How could you recognize the Quebec nation and then caught culture, which is the soul of a nation? And, and it is also economically very important. It means, if we believe the, the conference board, 8% uh, of the uh, gross national product, $85 million, 314 thousand jobs in Quebec only. Okay, Mr. We believe, that, as in the recent theories of Richard Florida, that there's such a thing as a creative class. And the creative class leads to investment, leads to greater economic activity, leads to community health. So yes, it's important. It's an important industrial, it's important economic sector to have filmmaking, to have dance and performance arts, to have our theater companies able to travel around the world. This is all critical. But arts and culture are also an essential part of who we are. And as we are overwhelmed by Hollywood and culture from the United States, we need to protect our identity as Canadians, our separate identities, our individual identities, okay, our May, Canadian identities. I was asked a little bit about what arts means to us. I enjoy the arts immensely. I, I uh, play a little bit of piano, although I wouldn't uh, call myself uh, terribly proficient. I come from a family on my father's side where there was a little bit of musical talent. Uh, my wife's family 
a very artistic family. They paint, they draw, they have uh, tremendous artistic abilities. My my daughter has a little bit of that uh, a little bit of that uh, artistic flair for design. She's in dance. My son is uh, my son is uh, learning guitar. One of the things we want to do we've we've increased the arts and culture budget in this country. But one of the things we do want to do, one of the things I announced in this election, is we're going to create a five hundred dollar tax credit for every child so that they can get a parents can get a tax credit if they enroll their kids in artistic or cultural activities and that should help really sustain and develop the cultural life of this country. Thank you Mr. Harper. Mr. Layton. Well the arts is uh, very important to Olivia and I. She's a sculptor. Uh, I'm not particularly talented um, uh, in any of these fields but I enjoy the arts and they're part of our soul. Most you know, people in the arts wouldn't be able to afford to send their kids to piano lessons. The average salary of the thousands of people who work in the arts runs from ten to twelve thousand dollars a year. They're some of the poorest workers we have. What we say it's time to give working artists a decent standard of living and make the first twenty thousand of what they earn on copyright and residuals tax free and provide some assistance to them in the tax system. Let's support the arts and their workers and their families in a real way. Much of the reaction to his government's decision to cut the arts has resulted in a real pylon from the other four of you. And I want to know whether you think conservatives are barbarians. Simple as that. Mr. Oh, Dion. Hey, no. Hang on a second. Hang on. Let's go. Well, Dion. I will choose my words. I think Mr. Harper uh, has uh, considered our artists as enemies when they are our inspiration. It's what you have done, Mr. Harper. In fact, it's not only the cuts, it's the fact that the way it has been announced, a Friday afternoon with the internet, hoping that people will not take notice of it. And it has been announced after by your spokesperson, <coughs> not by the minister, as if we were in the United States, President uh, Stephen Harper. And also it has not been justified by some management. You didn't say these programs were poorly managed. You said we don't like these artists. They are not uh, enough uh, mainstream to our taste. It's not the job of politicians to choose who will be helped by the government. We are not in big border territory. Okay, Mr. Deceptive, Mr. Harper gets a response. Uh, I think the, the real answer came from Jim Flaherty, the Minister of Finance. He said, we're a conservative government. When we're at the cabinet table, we're making decisions with our conservative hat, which means it was not an economic decision, it was an ideological decision. And you think he hates and the arts? <coughs> I'm saying is he, 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 it, it doesn't stand for him at a certain moral standard he has. And I think that we shouldn't play with that when we're financing the art sector. And when Mr. Harper is saying that the Canadian heritage budget was raised, was true by 8%, uh, well, it was raised, that's true. But the part of culture within that department was reduced by 8%. So between 2006 and 2009, you were minus 27 million before the cuts in the cultural sector. Okay, let's give him a chance to respond. Well, that's, that's simply not true. Uh, the budget well, for arts and culture in this country has gone up. We've looked at, as we've done in every department, it's a responsibility of the government, we've looked at all the programs and we've reallocated to programs that are more effective and away from ones that are not. We've increased, for the, increased funds to the Canadian Council of the Arts. We increased funds to museums, to festivals, <coughs> actually to CBC, some may be surprised. The specific programs we abolished, even the artistic director of Cavalier in Montreal admitted when he looked at the actual things we cut is because these were programs that were no longer effective. That's why we switched, that's why we've moved the funding to things that are more effective. And that's a responsibility a government has uh, to manage money during difficult times in every okay. area of government. Ms. May, Mr. Layton. Mr. Harper's decision to kill arts funding in 16 different programs, including such things as having climate controlled trucks that can deliver exhibits from gallery to gallery and museum to museum simply something that individual galleries will no longer be able to do because of your cuts tiny amounts of money and yet targeted for cuts so no mr pagan i don't think they're barbarians i don't think mr harper personally hates the arts nor do i think he personally supports the arts but he has appropriated all the levers of government to one sole end increasing his political electoral power and he goes through this process as your conservative war room has as a database that knows more about the individual Canadian voter than any prime minister or political party leader ever has. And for some reason, your tacticians and strategists have decided that these mean-spirited cuts against artists will help win you votes. And that's the whole reason for these stupid cuts. I have, I have cuts. two views on, on uh, two comments to make about the approach of conservatives. First, they talk about freedom as though it's one of those values. But, Mr. Harper, when it comes down to it, you're trying to 
You're trying to censor and limit the freedom of expression in this country, particularly of those who criticize. How is he trying to do and, that? Uh, well, by uh, it's the it up. it's the, just look at the kind of programs that get cut. I mean, they're the ones that take controversial ideas forward. They're the ones that get nicked first, and that's simply wrong. And I'd say to you, the second, the second one. Have an example of that. Well, the the foreign uh, the the uh, foreign promotion of uh, small and independent films coming out of Canada. Canada. You're saying, Why would you cut that? You're saying we, we cut those based on yeah. the film? Well, the men well, I mean, that came out of seriously. your political offices mentioned names like Gwen Dyer and Abby Lewis as reasons okay. the programs were cut. Okay, so Ms. Mayor, I promise, 